Ever wanted to download a whole bunch of files from the internet in one foul swoop? Maybe you want to download an entire website? Or you're just trying to download something huge, but the internet keeps dropping out and you have to start over and over again? Or maybe you've hacked your way into a computer and you want to transfer files to that machine? Excellent. There's a tool that can help you do all of that and it's called WGET. So let's get into it. This is the official home of WGET. And as you can see, it's free software for retrieving files using HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, FTPS, the most widely used internet protocols. But we don't use WGET through the browser, we use it in the command line. So let's get into the command line. Let's bring in my website. Here we go index.html saved. And if I type ls, you can see we do have index.html. And if we read it, ooh, a whole bunch of stuff. It's all HTML. You can see the divs here. You can see my name. You can see my LinkedIn link. You can see the Switchfire course. You can see a whole bunch of stuff that's all based around Webflow, which is where my website's hosted. So we're not going to spend too much time looking at this. If I flick over into Finder and open this, there it is. That's my home page saved to the desktop of my machine. And you can see in the URL, it says file instead of HTTP. That means it's pulling up a file in the browser from that location. So it works. Cool. Let's go back to the command line again. But what if we want to pull down the whole website? Everything. How do we do that? Let's just remove the index file for a minute. And as you can see, it's gone. And we're going to type wget-m for mirror and then GaryRuddle.com. If we pull down the entire website, it's going to keep everything as it is. All the links that it downloads in the HTML files will come as they are. We don't want that. We want to be able to use the website locally on our local machine. So we're going to type in convert links. We're also going to pull down all of the page requisites, which is the CSS, the JavaScript to make it look and function properly. Let's do that. And as you can see, it's been converting links here for all of my little blog posts. And that all happened pretty quick. Let's look at what we got. We actually don't have a file anymore. We have a folder. You can see the D on the left for directory. So if we go into that, you can see we have my website. That's pretty much the nav bar of my site right there. And if we look at these files in more detail, we can see articles is a directory. If we go into that directory, we can see we have individual files for all of the different blog posts that are in that folder. So it really does work. It's a great tool, wget-m. There's a really cool feature where you can tell wget to go through a text file and pull down everything that is in that text file. Let's have a look at it. So I've removed the Gary Ruddle website and I have a file called downloads.txt. And if we look at what is inside it, you'll see there are three things. One is my website, another one is Google's website, and the other one is favicon.ico, which is the little icon that appears in the URL when you're browsing Google's website. You could put anything in this text file and make it as long as you want. And if we type wget-i and then supply the file, wget will go through every line of the file and download those things. There they are, nice and easy. Really, really cool, useful feature. If you need to download things regularly from a certain place to get the latest version of them. Just put them into a text file and have wget pull it down. Another powerful feature of wget is being able to pull down files recursively from an FTP server. And you can even provide credentials to log in to the FTP server. 
There's an FTP server that you can go and play with. It's called Rebex. So if we type wget-r, that means recursive, and it'll go inside folders and download things in folders. And we supply the FTP location, which is test rebex.net, hit enter. You'll see it didn't work. Login incorrect. And if you go to the Rebex website, I'll put the link in the description, you can get some credentials for it. They're just demo and password. So we're gonna supply that again, and we're gonna add in user equals demo, password equals password, and enter. And now we're off. We're pulling down a whole bunch of files from the FTP server onto our local machine. So really, really powerful command. Saves you having to fire up a GUI and go and do this. You can just do it all in the command line very, very quickly. Sometimes you don't really want to see all of that output on the screen. So you can send it to the background just by adding a very, very simple thing. If we take our original command and we add dash B to the end, that puts it in the background. So now we can keep working doing all of our typing and it's downloading in the background. And if we have a look, everything's inside. So works like a charm. If you live in the part of the world where the internet times out, especially if you're doing big file downloads like Kali Linux ISO files or Windows ISO files that are two gig in size, you can recover those and start them again where you finished off. You don't have to go back to the start and it's very simple. All you do is you type wget-c and then you put the link to the original file you were downloading. So Kali Linux link goes here and it will pick that up and it'll continue the download exactly where it finished off. So that's it. That's the basics of wget, how to download things from the internet or from one machine to the other. And I recommend you go and check out man wget to pull up the manual for it. See if there's some other options that you'd be interested in looking at and learning about. And as always, have a play.